Okay, what's going on, guys? We Hello. are live! Hey, with Captain Oso! Hello, dude. Look over there, yeah, buddy. Look. Look at like, the, what's yeah, going good on? Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> Thanks for joining us tonight. We wanted to start off by announcing something that we're really excited about. First of all, we will be at the Annapolis Boat Show in October. Um, so if you haven't yet, grab your tickets and you can use the promo code ATTICUS2021 to get $5 off. And what we're a little bit more excited about is we're also... <laughs> oh, so he's using the phone. Yeah. He's getting used to it. He's okay, a busy man. He's a businessman, this yeah, little dude. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and we are also going to be doing a lecture seminar um, called Buying a Used Sailboat with Sailing Project Atticus. So if you're in the boat buying stage right now and um, you want to hear from two people who just went through that process and you want to learn a little bit of... Uh, the shoulda, woulda, couldas from, from two people, like I said, who just went through it. Uh, definitely check it out. Um, and you can buy tickets to that in the link down below. And we're also going to be giving away a ticket for that um, as well as... Yeah, we're going to be giving away a ticket for that seminar tonight during the live stream. Yes. So that's exciting. Yes. Real quick, guys, we're just going to try and blast through a couple of things. Thank you so much for joining us. This is going to be a really fun live stream. It's our first live stream in like... Yeah. A long time. We're, We're in a rusty. really random place right now, yeah. but it has internet. So anyway, one more thing we want to talk about, but we've got a lot of fun giveaways, so it's yeah, important to go they're really over. fun. So the other raffle that we're doing tonight is two, a combo two-day ticket to the Annapolis Sailboat Show, and then the last raffle is for these puppies. They are uh, Hobie sunglasses. They float, um, and they look pretty good, I think, on both male and female. They're polarized. Um, pretty awesome. I cool. really like them. So we got the glasses. <laughs> we got the boat buying seminar. We got tickets for one day for one person to the Annapolis sailboat show. It's a combo ticket. So oh. two, it's a combo ticket for two days. Got it. Okay. So happy to have you guys. Let's do some shout outs. We got Brad Scott. Oh, wait, hold on. And oh. to enter into the raffle, you just have to donate $5 or more via Super Chat or there's a donate link, link. There's a donate link in the description below. It's projectatticus.live. Um, and yeah, we will be raffling them off uh, in about 30 minutes. Okay, cool. So again, thank you guys for joining us. We've got James Nixon, Why We Sail, Josh Thompson. We got Siamara Golan. Oh, hey, mom. Hey, CEO. We've got Frank Navas, uh, Vlado Petrov, nice John one, buddy. Warboys, DJ Rudy Dog. It says, hola, buds. Hola, DJ. Ray Markham, S-E-Y-Z. Uh, Dave Solo. James Williams. Lake Erie Fishing Charters. You want to do it? Saxon Fool says, I want Oso. <laughs> oh, Stacey DePaolo. I hope you come and visit us. Um, Brian Lundy, SV Carpathia. Uh, KP, Bill Burkett, Roberta Robertson. <laughs> Look at the little dude. He just wants out. <laughs> He's like, for some reason, the energy level just went way up and I can't figure it out. Are you Say barely hi, awake? Buddy. Say hi. Yeah, we got so Tim cool. Leary in the house. We got Trip on Two Wheels. Awesome. Cool. So we wanted to start out also. Uh, thanks so much, Sylvain Doré. You are re entered into the raffle. He says, can't go to the boat show, but happy to help out. Well, we'll put you in the Hobie Polarized raffle then. Brad Scott says, where are your drinks? Yeah, we were running behind today, so we actually forgot one um, battery in the camera, so Jordan had to run back, so we are drinkless and foodless right now. No, I have the drinks. Oh, you do? I'm not allowed to drink until later in the live stream. <laughs> I, didn't realize I think you most got of them. you most of you probably know that. <laughs> well, yeah. we can do it in, in 30 minutes. And Oso that? already did a couple shots. Yeah, so he's a little That's crazy. why he's, yeah. he looks drunk. <laughs> Can't even stand up. I know. God. <laughs> Sailing SV Someday says we can only use the sunglasses sitting on a brand new to us 2005 Island Pack at 370 in, in Stewart, Florida. That's so awesome. Oh, nice. Congratulations, Congratulations. Guys. Yeah, send us some photos. That's so exciting. What about uh, you guys out there? Are any of you guys brand new um, boat owners? Seems like this is the season. Got Randall Hussman, Donald Moon. Um, yeah, awesome. And then I've also got oh, some- Daniel Oliver. Daniel Oliver in the house. Got some questions from our patrons that we can kick things off with as well. But that said, uh, guys, if you have any questions, throw them at us. Yeah. Any, I mean, anything. This is just gonna be a fun hangout sesh. And so uh, just oh. anything that's on your mind. Drinking word, extrusion sailboat and i think daniel oliver suggested oso oso <laughs> all right how about oso's butt yeah oso's, oso's butt. butt a drinking word yeah 
Ray DeBird, she says, hello, Atticus family, good to see you. Heidi and Franny, hey, girls. Um, old man Gib, don't need a ticket or the glasses, uses for a beer. That sounds awesome. All right. <laughs> All right, so we got a question from Rob uh, Miller, one of our patrons, and he was saying, Jordan appears to be dodging the boom while sailing. With the rig as it is, how do you plan on designing the bimini? Yeah, so we are raising the boom. Um, and in fact, I just today, um, well, so we, first of all, we put down a deposit or we paid half the invoice on the new Bimini uh, with Pacific Seacraft. So Pacific Seacraft is for sure making the new, it's going to be Bimini, it's going to be Davits, it's going to be an extended stern rail that goes, that basically encapsulates the whole uh, cockpit. Um, anything else fancy? I mean, that, that's basically it. Well, oh, and then a solar arch. Yeah. It's um, funny because we started like way up here. Like I remember when we got Atticus 1, we were looking at footage of all of our projects. And we're like, we'll build some cabinetry here. We'll gut it there. We'll put like a refrigerator freezer combo there. And like none of that happened. And like we thought we were wiser this time around with Atticus 2. We were like, we want water catchment. We want like like lighting for good camera lighting and and now it's just like bare bones it's still gonna be pretty <laughs> awesome though yeah uh, the fact of the matter or the fact that it's going to be davits solar arch bimini and extended stern rail all as one structure mm -hmm. you don't see that every day That's typically true. biminis and davits they're all kind of add-ons mm -hmm. this is going to be one solid thing mm -hmm. but it is going to be a soft bimini it's not going to be a hard top hard bimini like we have kind of been thinking but yeah. it was just once we started to actually look at the cost and the numbers it wasn't worth the the added expense so yep yeah but anyway so the the new boom is gonna the, the boom is gonna be raised and we are gonna be getting a, a new mainsail cut specifically for the boom and, and i should say that a lot of why i've been dodging the boom is um the previous owner had the mainsail cut to basically have as much sail area as possible with that boat. Yeah. So that boom is a lot lower than Pacific Sea Crafts come from the factory with. You know yeah. what I mean? Typically, they come out of the factory where someone like me could stand under yeah. the boom. And that was something in the boat buying process we weren't really, we didn't know that was going to be the case because when we saw Atticus 2 for the first time it was in like it was winterized and so we thought maybe just the way they stowed it the boom was like that low and so yeah we figured it would change but no it's pretty darn low yeah <laughs> um yeah when I'm at the helm I can kiss it yeah I'm like, yeah I'm like do not lean forward <laughs> I, love, I love you boom um so spotty trained asks what happened what's happening with the electrical yeah, Oso's kicking me. Come on, buddy. I'm sorry. <laughs> he just um, fell asleep right here. <laughs> yeah. um, so we, I am in the smack dab middle of the electrical project uh, at the moment. We're a little bit ahead on our videos, so not next week, but the week after will be the episode where we start to dive into this project. And I can just say that today my mind almost exploded actually my mind has almost exploded every day this whole week i think because i'm trying to wrap my mind around the whole thing and you know we redid the electrical on atticus one but it was just a whole nother world you know we are going with lithium batteries um we are going with a 360 amp alternator um, the lithium battery bank is going to be a 600 amp battery bank um, and we've got a you know 3000 watt inverter with 120 amp battery charger you know we're talking about some serious potential loads and you know it's really neat that we can get away with this so like with this new alternator we can completely charge our battery bank in like an hour and a half basically Crazy. like if it's dead we can get totally charged up so if it's like at 50 percent or something i mean you're talking like 45 minutes and you're done with the alternator and so that'll be really neat that'll be really really nice to be able to do that but to make things safe when dealing with that much electricity that much amperage there's it's just a whole nother level of having to pay attention to stuff, having to know exactly what the standards mm -hmm. are. And in a lot of ways, we just wanna make sure now that we're doing it, 
this is the time to do it right. Yeah. And so I'm just trying to make sure that all of our T's are crossed and all of our I's are dotted and all that. So yeah. Jordan looks like an accountant, like just at his desk with his like like furrowed brow and he's like calculating things and he's like, that won't work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and just like buying all the little components, you know what I mean? Like buying the bus bars, buying the fuses, buying the cable, mm. figuring out what cable to use. Yeah, doing all your calculations. Yeah, it's just it's just mind boggling. Especially because I didn't know how to do this going into it. And so learning it while doing it is just like very intense, <laughs> yeah. but I'm really lucky because we've been working with Ocean Planet Energy. Um, that company is great, and they've been super, super helpful. Um, Bruce Schwab has been kind of our guy there, and he's helped me a lot. And then also Neil at uh, Robin Hood at the marina that we're at. Uh, the manager there has been really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. Also, want to give a couple of thank yous. We missed Daniel Morris at the beginning, so thank you so much. I think I said uh, Randall Hussman, but I might have missed you, so I'm sorry if I did. Daniel Moon. We got William Street, and they say thanks for all the great content. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, James Nixon says happy to support, but I'm in Ireland, so sun sunglasses would be cool. <laughs> uh, Marcella Oni says have fun. Scott Wise. Thank you so much. Brad Scott says, Jordan didn't forget his liquid meth. <laughs> um, heart and I, Vic. I didn't forget it. I purposely didn't bring it. <laughs> I'm trying to go chemical free for at least like the first 40 minutes of this live stream. <laughs> I got a couple IPAs in the bag. Don't I didn't worry. realize. I'm thirsty. Huh? Okay, so uh, Heather and Vic says, we just bought a Pacific Seacraft 37 earlier this summer, sailed it from Fort Lauderdale to Maryland, and now refitting in Deal. Cool. I hope we can see you guys at the Annapolis Boat Show. That would be awesome. Uh, Bob Stooth. <laughs> Why was I so bad, though? And Bob Stooth. How much longer in the Great White North? Yeah, we're here until the Annapolis Boat Show, basically, and, you know, we're going to try and leave at the end of September, early October, in order to get there in time. There is a chance that this electrical project will keep us here longer than that. And so if that's the case, we'll have to leave Atticus 2 up here. Which I hope we don't have to do. Drive down to the show or fly or whatever. And then, uh, and then come back and take Atticus down in late October, which that would be a very, potentially very cold sail south. Yeah, so. I really hope we get everything done in time. Yeah. Fingers me too. crossed. Me too. Uh, Lake Erie Charters, thank you so much. Just say, hope to see you in Annapolis. P. Biz says, get the little guy some dog biscuits. All right, we got some Oso Love. That's a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Navas, Chris Nelms, Andy. We've got Shark Sharknado Tomato <laughs> from the crazy family who bought who brought you eggs and cider in the rain. That was so awesome. Thank you guys so much. And we eat like so many eggs. So that was a sweet gift. Thank you. <laughs> Um, Jess Galloway, uh, Monica P, love Atticus too. What will happen to Atticus? Great question. And I'm actually assembling next week's episode, which is all about um, our plan for Atticus 1. In fact, Daniel Oliver was asking, what about Atticus 1? Oh, cool. So, yeah. yeah. You want to so fill I, us in? Yeah. So we're usually like three or four weeks ahead of our videos. So I just got back from Sometimes. Panama. Yeah. <laughs> I just got back from Panama, I think like a week and a half ago. Um, and I went there to just clear out all of our stuff, figure out how to get the stuff that we needed back to the United States, um, and then figure out like what we can sell down there. So Atticus is ready to be listed. Um, we're going to um, open up the listing uh, after we release next week's video. So if you're looking for a 30 foot uh, boat with brand new sails, brand new water maker, brand new refrigerator, pretty sweet setup, Check that video out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's it's uh, moving along finally. Yeah. We've kind of put the whole selling the boat on hold until we could get our stuff off of Atticus 1. Yeah. And so we finally had a minute where Desiree could fly down and take care of that. And it was her and her mom, actually. Yes. If I were if, like the dream team. Yeah, if my mom hadn't been with me, I probably would have had a nervous breakdown. Because yeah. There was Thanks, a, CEO. There's a lot of stuff on that boat. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. so crazy. Like you think living on a 30 foot boat, you don't become a hoarder, but you do. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, oh, and then in fact, Dale of all trades was asking the same thing. Um, and uh, yeah, and that there, there you go, Dale. 
And uh, Paul Padova is asking, are you going to do an official name-changing ceremony? Um, and uh, uh, SE Wise was asking more or less the same thing. Will the boat have the new name at the boat show? Yes, it will definitely really? have the new name at the boat show. Yay. Mostly because of the legal aspect yeah. of it. Like, it's technically illegal for us to not have a name on the boat because it's a federally documented boat. Yeah, when we were going into Portland, there's a lot of Coast Guard cutters going by. So we'd be like getting the binoculars, like, oh no, it's a Coast Guard. Well, I'm not. <laughs> Keep going. I actually, one, one Coast Guard boat came by. And like the name is on the quarter, so like on the stern, <laughs> and I turned, so they kept seeing like the front of the boat. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Memory. I mean, I don't know if they would notice, but anyway, yeah. So it's definitely. Uh, is it Maverick or Maverick? Maverick. Nice. The guy from Top Gun. Yeah. Maverick. Yeah. So you were sailing Atticus too, like Maverick. Sailing Maverick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, we are definitely gonna change change you, the name. Did you it's, like invert at all? I didn't get inverted, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those projects that, you know, it can't be raining and it, it can't be too windy. And I'm nervous about it because I'm probably going to screw it up. But we have the actual uh, vinyl, you know, the actual decal. Yeah. Um, which, special thanks to Steve from Brantford. The, yeah, from Brantford. I got to look up what his, his company name is. Yeah, it's funny because. That seems like it would be the obvious first thing to do when you buy a boat, like put the new name on it. But it's just fallen way down low on our priority list. <laughs> so we definitely have to do it soon. As for doing a renaming ceremony, we would really like to. Um, but the way things are looking with our electrical install and our editing schedule and just planning for the boat show, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to squeeze it in. So we'll try. Um, it'd be really fun to have like a little maniac get together. Um, but it might just be the kind of thing where like the sun's out, we just stick it on there really quick. Um, yeah, we'll see. At the, maybe on, at the boat show we could, we could do like the, don't you like break a champagne bottle and get a virgin to do the name. on it? Yeah, there, I think there's all kinds of crazy stuff that you should yeah, do. Yeah, we could consider doing it at the boat show. If someone like comes Something with like a write up of what we have to do. Like we can do, and like all the props and what we need to do to make it happen, we'll do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you come with a bottle of champagne, we will break it <laughs> on will, the bowsprit. We will drink it, or just drink it. It's probably better. Yeah. Probably better uh, also, that. thank you so much, Sparky0039. Thank you, Ryan Birchter. Um, uh, Brad Scott says Captain Oso is so dang chill. <laughs> if this is his usual activity activity level, hopefully you'll do as well when you start. Uh, popping out two-legged crew. <laughs> yeah, we've been really lucky with Oso. And we go ahead. Well, real quick, Sluice Sluice Box Charlie says, "Where's the dog? <laughs> you may not have noticed. He's this <laughs> is the dog. He's right. He's like just under the frame, oh, hello. and he's getting sleepy. He's tired. Yeah. He's getting There's a sleepy. really cool dog park in Bath, and I just took him. <gasps> for he's like, like, dude, I'm out. Man. Yeah. I took him for about an hour, and because he's the smallest dog, usually he has to work really hard to like keep up with the other dogs so now he's just dying. yeah the other dogs are like uh, a nice jog and, and i was just like, like oh, <laughs> let me catch up <laughs> yeah. right buddy yeah <laughs> Oh, we need goodness. like an Oso cam that I can just cut I to know, yeah. every now and then. <laughs> uh, Ryan Birchter says, buy some booze, duh. <laughs> uh, Taurus5GA, love the channel, hope to meet up next month, awesome. Brian Wilson, thank you so much. And uh, Ray Luca Sick. <laughs> Woo, oh, and one more, Sailing Dracaris. Oh, cool. Thanks for the inspiration. Uh, watching you from our new boat. First night aboard, Tony and Lydia. Oh, cool. That's so exciting, Congrats, guys. guys. Your boat looks so badass. So Don Wilson asks, uh, when will we be down in North Carolina? And so that is sort of our only other destination. Little buddy. Um, <laughs> Here, I'll take him. Yeah. Give me the baby. Um, so pretty much... Our list of things to do, you know, on our way south is get to the Annapolis Boat Show and then get to North Carolina where we're going to install the new Bimini uh, and Davit thing. We need to come up with like a good name for it. I could just call it a Bimini, but it's like so much, it's so much more. Yeah. Anyway, the, uh, and solar array. So that is probably going to be, 
I think Pacific Seacraft estimated that they'd be done with it in the middle of November. Mm -hmm. um, so something like the middle of November is what we're hoping for in, to be in North Carolina. Mm. Um, Are you done? I have another question. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. I am and done. Dave, our moderator who's joining us from Ireland, was saying that multiple people are asking if we got little shit uh, when we were in Panama. And actually, I priced it out, and it's actually cheaper to just sell little shit. I mean, assuming we can sell it <laughs> at a decent price, um, and then buy a new or a showroom model um, UL290 in the States. So it is up for sale currently. So if you're looking for a UL290 and you're in Panama, check out projectatticus.com backslash dinghy. Do <laughs> uh, you need another question? No, I'm just I looking. Apparently, uh, we're buffering a little bit. Oh, no. So you can keep chatting. I'm okay, just gonna look I've got it. another question from our um, patrons. Says This is from Ryan Ray DeBurge. Now that you sailed the new boat, what is your most favorite... Uh, feature for each of you on Atticus 2. Hmm. I like... Oh, it isn't really a sailing feature, but I would say the... I call it the nuzzle station. Our little dinette that converts from a seating station to like a bed. I would say that's my favorite <laughs> part of Atticus 2. Um, it's great when we're underway. It's great for uh, watching movies and YouTube and for nuzzling with Oso, and when he was a puppy, it was a really good place to have him, like, confined and nothing could hurt him. So I'm figuring that'll be a really good spot uh, when we do have some four, not four-legged crew, two-legged crew. <laughs> that would yeah. be an oops. <laughs> and I would definitely say that um, I think that, oh, and by the way, so I'm looking at it, and it, it's looking like our the stream is pretty healthy. So if anybody's having some buffering issues, just refresh your... Uh, your web browser or the the page mm. that you're on basically um so uh, uh i think my favorite part of the boat still is okay. the shower oh yeah the shower oh our sailing characteristics oh, god i mean the fact that the boat is so comfortable yeah you know it but no the shower man that thing like when <laughs> when we have like a long hard day and i just take a shower or we we you know get back from our a, 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 an offshore sail or something and I take a shower. It's just, it's seriously you mean the best a shower feeling. or a beer shower? What? Yeah, maybe <laughs> both. Yeah, um, depends on the day. Uh, Brad Scott is saying, "How have you have you gotten Oso to do his business on board? What solution did you come up with?" Um, and yeah, basically, we just um, when we brought Oso back. Um, you know, we were new boat own or dog owners, so we didn't really know know like, okay, with the puppy, you have to like take him out to pee very often so we were playing with him for like three hours on the boat and finally he like got off of us and then went kind of sniffing around and then peed on this rug which we didn't even really like very much <laughs> uh it came with the boat and so um we just took that rug and put it out in the cockpit and then uh every hour or so we would just take him in the cockpit and let him kind of walk around and eventually that became his pee spot and then we transitioned from the rug to the um his little like grass pad and now he's pretty great yeah actually one of our sails the grass pad um fell overboard i think like there was a storm or something and we only had it clipped on with one little clippy and we lost it for a whole trip and he was really confused he was like not sure where to pee and everything so i think yeah that that was too bad for him mm -hmm. well i was just gonna say uh james well i assume it's james from sailing zingar oh said, uh, james what's going on Hey, what's up, man? Says, really hey, pitch. guys, uh, see you at the boat show. <gasps> Yay! That's, cool. that's so exciting. Nice. Are you bringing Very your boat exciting. over there? Uh, says, it'll be cool to hang with you again. Much love from Panama. Oh, that's awesome. Nice, man. Oh, that's so awesome. I'm so excited. Yeah, cool. Um, and what? then JDT says, what type of dog is Oso? And he is a, a half Cairn Terrier and half miniature poodle. So a Cairn Doodle. Mm -hmm. I I allow that word or that name, Cairn Doodle. The other is uh, Cairn Poo. Poo. <laughs> I won't say that. That's not. That's just too yeah. silly. Okay, we've yeah. got another question from one of our patrons. Does Atticus Two have a spinnaker? And if not, do we plan on getting one? Yeah, it do, it does have a spinnaker. Um, we haven't used it yet because, first of all, it's a giant thing. I mean, that is that's one thing that. I didn't realize about 
I didn't think about going from Atticus 1 to Atticus 2 is that something like a spinnaker is going to be so much harder to, to manage. Now, the fact that the Genoa is bigger, that's not a big deal because you've got winches, you know, you can, you can have mechanical advantage over everything. But when it comes to raising a spinnaker with a sock, that's just a... The one on Atticus 1 was kind of unwieldy and difficult. Yeah. This one is just a massive thing. Uh -huh. And so we really will want to be able to sail in light winds and not motor if we're gonna if we're gonna put that thing up and so what that means is like a long passage where the wind is supposed to be light and from you know a, a stern for a long time and we just haven't had that uh yet every time that we've had light winds from behind us you know we've motored for a little bit and then the wind picks up and then we sail kind of thing so one of these days we'll put it up I also I'll add that the boat sails so well in light winds that there's such a fine line between the Genoa being mm -hmm. enough and there not being enough wind and it's not even worth putting the spinnaker up it's mm -hmm. like a sliver of uh, of wind speed you know what I mean so mm -hmm. anyway we'll definitely use it just haven't had the opportunity yet. Mm -hmm. Couple more thank yous. Philip uh, Lamont says, "When what day can we say hi at the boat show?" Um, and we're going to be posting a schedule of kind of like office hours that we'll be having at Atticus every day, and then we're also going to be um, kind of visiting um, some like Highfield booth and the Mantis booth. Um, so we'll we'll post our schedule um, and we'll be widely available. And then we're also going to have a bunch of. Uh, patron only hangouts uh, so we're gonna have if we get Atticus 2 down there we're gonna have uh, happy hours uh, one hour happy hours for like 10 10 people so we'll have signups for that every day at the boat show um, we're also doing a couple of sales um, and that will be um, open to our patrons first uh, but then it'll be available for everyone so yeah we've got tons of really fun events coming up at the boat show yeah um, and by the way we should probably do a giveaway oh yeah all right let's do it well I, I got a do the numbers and stuff. So okay. Do another question. So it's time for me to entertain. Yeah. Well, why don't you do a couple more I'll things? I'll juggle a phone, this, and Oso. Oh, Oso, so get over here. I'm so thirsty. I'm going to juggle you. <laughs> All right. So let's see. What do, what do we have here? Um, so Zingaro says, no, won't have the boat at the show, but I may take a sail on a dream charter cat if you guys are interested. All right. I'm I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. Jordan, I'll get us a guitar. <laughs> yes. Nice. Good idea, buddy. Oh, okay. I've got mine on yeah. on the boat if yeah. we end up bringing it. When Jordan's parents came to visit, Jordan was like, "No, we have a bigger boat. Can I have my guitar?" And it's like the size of a human. <laughs> it's a big guitar. So but I don't know if that's gonna last on it. I, James, did that? It didn't end up in our episode. Uh -huh. Me and James and jamming. There was like a bunch of us jamming. I was playing harmonica. He, James, you've got a great voice. James is a is a like really good. He's a stud of the guitar. Musician, yeah. I was very impressed. I was just sort of there, <laughs> you know. But that's the nice thing about playing harmonica is it's like. Well, at least you know no one else there is going to be playing on my <laughs> But anyway, that was fun. Yeah, it was really cool. That was way back in Isla Mujeres. So it feels like a long time ago. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right, so anything yet, buddy? Nope, I need five more minutes. Because okay. some people are boat show and some people are glasses, so. Um, Shelly Meredith says, how were conditions for you during Hurricane Ida? And it wasn't too bad at all for us. Um, definitely a little bit of wind, a little bit of rain, um, but I mean, we're in such a protected bay, excuse me, we're in such a protected bay at Robin Hood, Director Robin Hood Marina, that, uh, you know, what wind there was, we didn't feel a whole, whole lot of it anyway. Um, so yeah, it was, it was not a big deal for us. We've been pretty lucky. I mean, I thought that going to Maine was like a sure thing, that you just wouldn't have any problems with hurricanes and tropical storms. And it seemed like at least this year that definitely wasn't the case, meaning that we got lucky and missed pretty much two named storms. But I felt like we didn't need to be lucky. <laughs> I mean, I felt like you, uh, you, yeah, you just, uh, luck wasn't an, a factor once we were up in Maine. But maybe I just had that wrong. Um, Jim Ulmer in the house. Hey, Jim, man, it was so great getting to meet you the other day. Um, you guys may remember on Atticus 1, we had to replace the, we cut the base off of our main and mizzen masts. 
and Jim was the guy that machined us the new bases, and he got to come visit and say hi the other day, and that was really awesome. And uh, yeah, so thanks for stopping by, Jim. That was great. Um, and uh, let's see here, what do we got? Um, oh, and then SV Carpathia says, could I get a link for the dinghy, please? Sure, it's projectatticus.com backslash dinghy, D-I-N-G-H-Y. Yeah, cool. Okay, got a winner for the Annapolis Boat Show, two tickets, or it's, it's a combo. It's one ticket for two days. Yes. Okay. Randall Hussman. Randall Hussman. Yeah. Come on Come down. Come on down. Yeah, so if you can make it to the boat show, uh, shoot me an email at des at projectatticus.com um, with your name, telephone number, and we'll get you set up. And then um, if you can't make it to the boat show, send me your T-shirt size, and we'll get you a T-shirt. Um, cool. Cool. So Ray Markham is saying, what's the drinking word again? Oso, extrusion, Oso's butt. Oso's and, butt. And what's the other? sailboat. We, we, we have not said Oso's butt. No. Not, well, we've said Oso's butt a lot. Referring to. Just now. Yeah. <laughs> so Oso's butt is, it was a bad drinking word, but Oso's butt has now become a pretty good drinking word. Oso's butt is very prevalent now. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, and then uh, Dave Pepper was asking, um, oh, can you see Oso back there? He wants to go. Here, I gotta go this way. Oh, he's, he's turned into such a good dog, man. When he wants to go somewhere, he just stands at a door and like looks at it. <laughs> and he's like, when I do this, sometimes the door opens and he just sits there and keeps looking. Sorry, buddy. Maybe someday. In a minute. Yeah. Um, but Dave Pepper is saying, will you be stopping in Delaware along the C&D on your way to Annapolis? Um, and we will definitely be heading through the C&D canal. Um, and uh, where exactly we're going to stop, I'm not certain. Can because I'm just so thirsty. Yeah, what can I get you? Here, take your, take your pick. Um, so, and we had some... Uh, some People stop by the boat just today and yeah. grab us some beers. Oh, it's beers. red wine. Oh, holy moly. <gasps> Buddy. Oh, I'm so excited. Yay. Because yeah. everyone, uh, a lot of times people stop by the boat and they're like, I know Jordan loves IPA. And they're like, here's all this amazing IPA. And I'm like, I like red wine. Yeah. <laughs> so I got red wine. Yay. Yeah. So cheers, guys. And this is from the Maine Beer Company. It's awesome. called Lunch. And it's one of my favorite beers in Maine so far. Yeah. Cheers. Um, but yeah, so the long story of it is we're going to be in such a rush trying to get to Annapolis that uh, um, we, I just don't know where we're going to stop. We're just going to go yeah. as far as each weather window will allow us to go. Yeah, it, um, it might be kind of like a long offshore passage that's not very fun and kind of bad weather, but it'll be a good test for Atticus too, and we really, really want to get it over there. Oh, poor baby. Little buddy. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, and Tim Leary. Hey, Tim, how you doing? Um, Tim was saying, how was the food at Five Island Lobster? Oh, it was so it was, good. It was very good. So something you'll see in next week's episode is uh, Tim, our rigging surveyor and our, our you know, favorite rigger, uh, was actually at one of the anchorages yeah. that we went to with my parents. It was just such a crazy coincidence. We literally pulled into this really tight mooring field <laughs> and we're coming into the entrance and there's, there's like a rock on my right and a rock on my left. And I, I know it's sketchy, but I think it'll be fine. And so I'm coming in and then I see someone doing this, <laughs> like way off in the distance. And I'm like, what are they We're gonna run into saying? something. <laughs> and they're just doing this. I'm like, shit, man, I think they're trying to tell us don't go through that pass. So I turned hard right, and then we kind of did a loop, and then they were st still kind of waving or whatever. And, and so I was like, okay, well, I guess maybe they weren't trying to tell me not to go. <laughs> Went through, and it was Tim, and he was visiting a friend of his. That uh -huh. was just such a crazy coincidence. Oh, well, buddy. <laughs> poor baby. He's gonna he's gonna shut down the live stream. Yeah, <laughs> I'll get a couple more thank yous. Larry sailing tiger paw, nice. 
Andre Andre Barrera, Stacy DePaulo says, I'll come by on Friday the 24th if you're still in Maine. Yeah, I think we'll probably be here by then. Um, and Fridays are upload days, so if you can come like earlier, like before five, that would be the best. But just shoot me an email. Um, the Full Life Crew, my wife wants to know how the name Bud came about. <laughs> well, I mean, you probably remember better than me. Yeah, but. basically when we started dating, Jordan tried to call me all sorts of like cutesy names. I forgot, like Babe. Um, and I was just like, listen, I don't really like those names. Can you call me something like a little less girly? So then you started calling me like bro and man and dude. And then just became Bud. I called you Chode for a little <laughs> while. You did call me Chode, yeah. yeah. And people would be horrified. And I was like, well, it's better than Babe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, and so, uh, and I'm getting, <laughs> a lot of people like lunch, which is cool. That's good. That's awesome that it's, uh, that it's, I mean, it is a seriously epic beer. <laughs> uh, it's, it's on face. I think you have to like do this Yeah, there or you go. You got to oh. cover your face. Oh, okay. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> technology man is a really good beer, and and I, I apologize, I can't remember uh, your guys' names that came by that gave me this beer. I that's so awful of me, but it's just been a tough week. But if you guys are watching, thank you so much for the beer. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you. And then um, Earl says, like your teas, but need LT. Any chance in merch? What's LT? I don't know. Something elusive. Some kind like of your teas, but need LT. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe someday. Um, Craig H. says, I can't go to the boat show, but thank you for taking me places in your videos. I could never actually go. Oh, that's really cool. Thanks for watching our videos. Yeah. Um, Brad Scott says, moving forward, all of my super chats and Patreon con contributions go to the Oso oh Treat Food, Pee, and Pad Fund. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. He's getting antsy, aren't you? Yeah. But yeah, and a lot of people are talking about, you know, the lunch and IPA. It's really been a cool aspect of being in Maine because I might even want to say, well, no, that's going to make too many people upset. Maine yeah. is one of the best states in the United States that I've been to for craft beer, I think. It's just a nuts place for craft beer. Mm -hmm. And I've had a lot of really cool beer in New England in general, but just... I've never been to a place where I've tried so many different craft beer companies and they are all just super killer. Like there's just no duds. They're just they're just amazing. So anyway, I've had a really enjoyable beer experience in Maine, yes, which has been have. cool. Especially <laughs> coming from Central America. Like I remember Remember when we were off grid during COVID mm -hmm. and we were just n not going to stores for yeah. like weeks and weeks and weeks. And uh, finally, we went to that little store at Red Frog Marina, mm -hmm. and we took the dinghy there, mm -hmm. and they sold IPAs. <laughs> and so here we are on Atticus One, like in the middle of the jungle, yeah. and we dinghy to this store, and they have IPAs. Yeah. And I was just like, oh my god! You know? <laughs> it was like the best it day. Yeah. It's funny how, in so many ways, it's, it's hard, you don't think... It's hard to predict what's going to be like so enjoyable about cruising. <laughs> and like that moment when I could drink IPAs in the middle of nowhere was like one of my the best, highlights. The best was when we'd run into cruisers who made a beeline from the States to like Panama. So they'd still have cans of IPAs in their like food storage and like their backups. So you'd be, we'd become friends with them pretty quickly. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Julian Marquez says, see you, Annapolis. Uh, safe travels down. Oh, real quick. We've got a couple of uh, people, Dwayne as well as Ray uh, Lukasik, have asked where we are right now. Oh, yeah. And it's probably a fair thing to say. <laughs> it kind of looks like we're in like a mental institution. <laughs> you know what I mean? Surprise. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but we're in a uh, co-working space in Bath, Maine. Um, and so this is actually where we go... Uh, every Friday evening to upload the episode. Um, sometimes, like last week, we were here until one in the morning. Yeah, that Jordan's problem or Jordan's computer was having problems again. Yeah. Anyway, that was a nightmare. Yeah. So we're getting to be familiar with this place, yeah. and so this is like an actual conference room that you that we can rent. And so there you go. Mm -hmm. And it's you know we haven't done any live streams like this because when we do come here. 
it's because we're trying to frantically finish the episode and upload it kind of thing. But mm-hmm. this week, since we skipped, we figured let's just do a live stream. Yeah. Uh, Why We Sail says, any thoughts about getting Oso a cat? And he hasn't, like, interacted with the cat yet. He's seen them from far away, and I know he wants to. So we at least want to get him to play with a cat and see how he likes it. <laughs> I've heard that boat cats are really great because they don't um, need to get off the boat as much. Um, and they're just, you know, more self-sufficient. Jim Ulmer, wow, thank you so much. Jennifer Osborne says, see you in Annapolis. William Street, thank you so much. She says, glasses. Um, Carlette, oh, Carlette Simpson, she's um, going to the boat buying show. Watching you from our boat on the Chesapeake Bay. Excited to see y'all at the boat show and seminar. Keep living the dream. Awesome. And thank you, Trisha. P, breakfast Saturday, sailing project Atticus. That's my routine. Aw. <laughs> Bill Badger, thank you, P Biz. My list of things I like about Project Atticus. One, everything. Two, scene number one. <laughs> oh, I like it, you. Pete. So Thanks, cool man. Larry Summer says, hey, guys, I live in Massachusetts. The weather's about to change. Time to head south. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. It is good. Right now, it's actually wonderful because oh, it, it was so good. very hot yeah. in Maine. Uh-huh. Another thing that I didn't realize that happened, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I just had such a misconception of coming up here, you mm-hmm. know? It's like, it won't be hot. And there aren't hurricanes, <laughs> and and neither ended up true. Yep. yep. Um, but uh, it is just like such pleasant weather right now. Um, real quick, uh, oh, Randall Hussman. Ooh. Hey, bud. <laughs> uh, Randall Hussman asks, uh, which yacht did y'all meet on? And we actually met. We were both working on Limitless. Um, which is the yacht that the guy that owns the the limited corporation it's his yacht so it's the guy that owns victoria's secret basically Mm -hmm. and no there wasn't any cool victoria's secret stuff (laughs) we got to meet their head like what was the job it was like oh the stylist yeah he would go our trend specialist yeah he's like the trend analyzer or he had to like speculate yeah what the next thing was mm-hmm. and he'd like travel the world figuring out what the like next year's style would be mm-hmm. anyway that was very it. exciting that was it <laughs> no hot ladies in lingerie none of that yeah too bad sorry bud i know i know <laughs> steady or stuck with me yeah but Good it was bro. a cool it was a cool boat it was very big it was 330 feet uh 315. 315? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He has a big boat. Oh, Earl Hunt says, Lake Jordan, I'm six feet, six feet three tall. <laughs> six feet three inches tall. I need large, tall shirts. Ah, any chance talls can be added to your store. I will look into it, but man, for whatever reason, the like t-shirt industry right now is like... Really Prejudice against tall people. That and like really backed up right now. So hey. I, I'll try and see what we can do, but it's been tough. Uh, Penny Dar, what's also, up? She says, hey, bud, so glad to see y'all and ha- happy and healthy. I finally did find myself a puppy. Oh, that's great. What kind of puppy did you get? That's so exciting. Hold on. I just threw the ball for Oso, uh-huh. and, and then he got all excited, and then it wedged up into a chair. Oh, and no. Get it. All, right. <laughs> all right, I'll get another question, and then we'll, we can also do the next giveaway. Um, da, 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 da. The, the Full Life Crew asks, my wife wants to know how... The, oh, we already got that one. Um, Paul Tabone is asking, do you think y'all will be coming to Australia one day? And yeah, we would we would definitely love to make it out that, that way. Um, who knows when that'll be, but hopefully in the next three years at least. <laughs> oh, who knows? But yeah, I'd love to. Um, Ethan Stevenson says, I think I've seen you wearing Limitless gear. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yep. <laughs> we may or may not have come by that gear by limi- legitimate means. <laughs> no, they, they donate a lot of stuff. And actually, though... <laughs> hey, dude, come on, man. When, when a lot of yachts donate their clothing for that purpose so that random people aren't, like, wearing like branded clothing you're supposed to cut all of the logos off which um we did not do we did not steal the clothes no, by the way no. they just forgot to ask for them back <laughs> uh robert <laughs> scott robertson says when you are in annapolis you need to hook up with mj sailing oh yeah very cool i guess this year the boat show is doing a like YouTube booth, and so all of the YouTube channels that will be at the show are going to be at this booth. 
So uh, we will be there for a little while, and we'll have um, some T-shirts that we are, that we'll have for sale over there. Um, so yeah, we would love to meet MJ Sailing. Hopefully they'll be there as well. Yeah. Oh, Precision Sales is here. Oh, okay. what's up, Ron? So hey, so uh, I he's they're asking uh, how's the Bimini project going. So someone earlier in the stream just was asking about how low the boom is when we're sailing, and yeah, we just got the numbers from Pacific Seacraft, who's building the Bimini, on what the boom clearance needs to be. So on Monday. I'm gonna measure everything for the new main sale and then get that to you guys. So anyway, there you go. Glad glad I was able to tell you on the live stream. That's great. Okay, also, I've got the second winner for the um, boat buying seminar tickets. And that is going to be, he might have to go to the bathroom. He drank a lot of water. Can you wait 10 minutes, little dude? <laughs> yeah, I think he's fine. He drank, he went right before the stream. Yeah. Okay, who's okay, gonna win? Wait, come on, is... that was such a cliffhanger. <laughs> Julian Marquez. Um, Julian Marquez, yeah, so, come on down. All right, yeah, so come shoot here, me buddy. an email at des at projectatticus.com and I will hook you up with uh, a ticket to our boat buying seminar, um, which will be on Sunday, October 17th. Good um, cool. Yeah, yeah, relax. Poor little guy. You want to answer a question? <laughs> yeah? So, okay, so someone asked a really great question, which was, where do we think we'll be in a year? Oh. Um, and I'm so sorry, because I don't know if I'm going to be able to say who it was. Can you look for it while I answer? Sure. Um, but yeah, and, and then, in fact, someone else here, uh, Mouser K 98 says, when will you come back to Providencia? Um, which... In a year from now, which it's right now, it's September. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll probably be in boy Guatemala. So okay, that's a question. We've been talking about going to Guatemala um, for some work to the boat, right? Like the the mast could really be painted. Um, we've got to replace the standing rigging. Um, and stuff like that is great to do in Guatemala. So it's a bummer that we've been there before, but it would be a really smart way to like get Atticus to up to like a really solid level mm -hmm. of, of like maintenance. Uh -huh. um, and we've kind of told our patrons this, but I don't know if we've talked about it um, in like a video, but we've, we've kind of... We're really excited to cross the Pacific, um, but at some point this summer, we realized that we have way more projects than we thought we could handle in like three months to get the boat like perfectly outfitted for offshore cruising to be able to cross the Pacific uh, this coming year. Um, and we just kind of made the decision, okay, let's actually take a step back and take it a little bit slower than we anticipated. So we're definitely not gonna cross the Pacific this coming year. Yeah, well, and also it doesn't look like, the real key is when does New Zealand and Australia open up, which I guess I don't know much about Australia, mm -hmm. but I know New Zealand still hasn't opened up. Mm -hmm. And the reason that that's a big deal is because it's all well and good if you can cross and get to French Polynesia, but you really don't want to spend cyclone season in French Polynesia. It's hard, they're not issuing long stay visas now. So, it, and then once you leave French Polynesia, where are you gonna go? Mm -hmm. You can't go to the Cook Islands, you know, and, and so you end up getting like stuck in Fiji or Tonga like, uh, like Gone with the Winds did, which is, is fine, but then you're there for cyclone season and if you don't want to be there for cyclone season, that's a bummer, you gotta haul out to be safe so it's, you can't can't create content that way so there's just a lot of you know variables and dynamic stuff involved with waiting for certain countries to open up and, and then pulling the trigger on the Pacific crossing so that's definitely not going to happen this next season so to answer the initial question <laughs> yeah like you know uh, just trying to think September would be like late summer so yeah, there is a chance that we would be in Guatemala, and if we weren't in Guatemala, then we'd probably be in like Panama, you know, somewhere out of the hurricane belt. 
Yeah, um, but all we really know for certain-ish is we're going to the Annapolis Boat Show. Yeah. And then after that, hopefully we'll head nor- or south to North Carolina. After that, we'd like to go to the Bahamas. And then after that, we don't really know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, Greg Cox was asking, have y'all heard uh, from David from Panama? <laughs> and it's funny because that ne- no one in their community has cell phones or internet. Um, and actually, it was really interesting. A lot of the kids that we connected with, um, they would have like pre-downloaded um, like cartoons in English, like Bugs Bunny cartoons that like I doubt they even understood, but like that was their golden form of entertainment on like this really weird device, you know. And then they would bring their phones and ask if we could charge them. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So or they'd like, like drop off their phone. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> so they could spend the rest of the day watching videos. Yeah, like on repeat that they didn't understand. Yeah. So the technology there is not really up to. Speed, I guess you could say. So we haven't but, heard from him. We left him our email address, and we said, if you ever get internet, send us an email, and we'd be happy to get in touch. Um, I think, I don't know if we mentioned it, but um, our YouTube community put together a huge care package for David and his family, and so we were able to send over um, fins. Um, like snorkeling fins. Yeah, a fishing reel. Um, some books, uh, learning English books. A bunch of hooks and uh-huh. like and uh, lures and lures, stuff. Lures, lots of lures. Um, and then our friends who live in Boca del Toro, they delivered all of that to David, and then they fell in love with him also. So they actually got made him a new sail for his uh, little dugout canoe. Um, and then we were able to um, raise some funds for David's family. Um, so De- uh, Monica and Mike gave the family um, the money that they donated, and they bought David a new a new Cayuco and yeah, a new little dugout canoe and a pig and a chicken for yeah. the family. <laughs> yeah, so, which is awesome. Yeah, like that's so cool. I'm pumped about the new canoe because his dugout <laughs> canoe i don't think we actually showed it in the episode but it was so old mm-hmm. that the wood was just rotting in certain areas mm-hmm. and so there were just holes that like water would come in and so he would take like plastic, plastic like uh shopping bags you know and just jam them into the holes <laughs> in the <laughs> in the boat and he would just sit there and like and he, he would ask us for like something to like stick it in with so Uh it'd be like do you have like a fork or something (laughs) and you just like jam the plastic into these holes you know such a resourceful kid when i was 11 years old i don't think i could have saved myself from a sinking boat (laughs) yeah Uh. Yeah. oh uh one oh this is a great question sylvain dore was asking uh regarding the standing rigging are you thinking of dyneema we're, we're still on the fence about it. You know, I've gone back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Literally, probably more times than that. <laughs> and so to I, I don't want to offer up a stance on it just yet. You know, I think there's a lot of good things about Dyneema um, for standing rigging. And I just and I and I just don't know if the really good things outweigh the like simplicity of something that's very broadly used like stainless steel you know because in a way that's that's the appeal i could it's so much just easier to just do it you know mm-hmm. so we'll see what what we end up going with we'll let you know yeah. ari shoals was asking have you sailed with all three sails up yet and yeah i think in this coming yeah. episode in this no yeah. in in last week's episode we did, we did. yeah for oh. sure Okay. For well, sure. Definitely in this week's episode because I'm assembling. I assembled that today, and I definitely saw some of that. Um, in addition to air conditioning and or heat. Okay, Todd Blakeman, one of our patrons, is wondering if we are going to be considering air conditioning and or heat uh, for Atticus Two. And actually, we already have uh, a heating system. Um, yeah, it's a diesel uh, S bar heater, which is awesome. Which is killer. Yeah. Um, we don't have air conditioning. I, as Jordan's been planning our electrical upgrade, we're not going to install air conditioning anytime soon. But he has planned maybe we've, installing it in the future. Yeah, we've basically spec'd the system or designed the system so that it could accommodate air conditioning in the future. So that's good. Yeah, and it's funny because I went back to Panama, like I said, like three weeks ago, 
And I freaking love Maine. I love the weather. I love the people. I love the trees. I love how it gets cool at night. And so I thought I was going to go back to Panama and be like really depressed because it was so hot. And it was really freaking hot. Like you're basically just constantly soaked in your own sweat and you smell really bad. At least I do. Um, <laughs> but it wasn't like there's something that it just you settle into it and it's kind of like, well, this is me now. So mm -hmm. I, I didn't I, I thought I would I thought after living in Maine, I would have like a episode of depression being in the tropics yeah. and I haven't been looking forward to going back to the tropics without air conditioning because living in Maine is like having free air conditioning but I think sometimes yeah I think human as humans were adaptable and so after a day in the humidity I was like whatever this is my life not so bad <laughs> yeah yeah you just sweat more yeah I feel like that's one thing that changes your life is like you just every you're just wet <laughs> yeah, a lot of the time. You you're either sweating or it's raining, yeah. and so you're just wet. Uh, you know. <laughs> oh, little buddy, I know you're almost Poor done. Poor guy, he's just sitting at the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so weird though, cause it's late, so he should be just chilling. I think he has to go to the bathroom. Yeah, he just yeah, he's yeah. gotta go. Sorry. Okay, yeah. well let's do uh, do a couple more questions. I'm going to do the raffle for the sunglasses again. These are the mojo satin black with the cobalt mirror um lens um they're polarized polarized they're polarized they float i feel like like i said i feel like they look good on girls and guys <laughs> yeah you look hey. pretty hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we really loved our hobie sunglasses so and a couple people have mentioned jordan's like old man sunglasses in the last couple of episodes and we finally, we finally upgraded to yeah. some modern day prescription sunglasses for this guy yeah yeah <laughs> all right so you do another question i'm gonna get the winner okay so um the mac, uh, mac cool mac says the solar system on the list um i assume he means the solar like array the solar system is well. Anyway, won't go into that one. Um, but uh, yeah, the the yeah, we are definitely uh, in the middle of it. It's really interesting because in the past with Atticus one, you know, it was it was always just me doing one project at a time. This is the first time ever where I've done like project managing in a way. And we're lucky to have been able to do it, but in, but we also sort of, you know, thought about this when we bought Atticus 2. We, we knew that it was going to need a lot of improvements before the boat would be ready for, like, offshore voyaging. And so it's been kind of fun to be managing all these projects, but it's also been just, again, kind of like I was talking about with the electrical install, my brain is about to explode because it's just Olivia at the... Uh, at the boat or at the marina yeah. put it really well today she said it's like trying to drink out of a fire hydrant huh. you know what i mean so it's just like the water's blasting out of a fire hydrant you're like trying to drink it and it's just going too fast that it's like hard to drink yet there's so much water that's exactly how i feel about trying to like get my mind up to speed with all the things that are going on but anyway with the solar it's looking like we're gonna have four 110 watt semi-flexible panels on the soft bimini and then it's looking like something i'm hoping we're going to get three 150 watt panels hey, uh -uh. on the solar arch um, so those would be rigid panels extending aft sort of over the davits um, partially over the davits and partially over just the the stern of the boat um, and so that adds up to, uh, well, what is that? That's, that's 450, um, that's 890. So like just about 900 watts of solar. Now, I don't know for a fact that we're gonna get all that up there, but that's sort of the, the goal at the moment. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I don't wanna seem like we're like decadent when it comes to solar, because that is a lot of solar, depending on what kind of, cruising you're doing but you know any more with doing stuff like this like a live stream right like the number of electronics that we're running to accomplish this 
is kind of incredible. And these like these laptops aren't just typical laptops. These are workstations that require a huge amount of electricity. So our style of cruising requires more electricity than than an average cruiser. Now you could easily make an argument that any cruiser would benefit from as much solar as possible. Like Brad Scott, I saw earlier was saying that he's trying to put together a system where he could run uh, air conditioning off of the batteries. Nice. And I mean, like that's that would be amazing. If I've learned anything from having the diesel heater on Atticus 2, it is so fun mm -hmm. to have it be uncomfortable outside and comfortable inside your boat. Mm -hmm. It is like the funnest thing. Mm -hmm. You go outside, you're like, boy, it sucks out here. And then you go inside, you're like, yes. <laughs> like, Most I people with homes probably feel that way. Yeah, but a boat's different because yeah. you could be anywhere. Yeah, you know true. what I mean? You true. could be in these like insanely beautiful places mm -hmm. and yet be sort of beating mm -hmm. the the uncomfort uncomfortable aspects of, of your situation. True. So anyway, it's it's definitely something to aspire towards. And I know Desiree's big on it. Yes, I am. Yeah. Okay, winner for the Hobie Eyewear Polarized Sunglasses is Sparky0039. Woo! All right, Sparky. So, yeah, shoot me an email at des at um, projectatticus.com with your first name, last name, and address, and I will send these babies over to you. Okay, cool. Well, uh, Emily BH says, one of you should let Oso out. I know. And that's very true. I know. And uh, we're, we're at the one hour mark with the live stream, so we probably should get going. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a lot of fun, guys. Thank you so much for joining us yeah. for the live stream. Oh, let me just do a couple more thank yous. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we've got Crystal Limerick. We've got David N. Tricken. Uh, Ray... Uh, Markham and Rhonda Powell, Christine Roadway says, my husband and I love watching. Thank you. Ethan Stevenson says, just here for the drinking game. Glenn's Adventurous Life says, thanks for keeping the adventures going. Uh, you guys are awesome from Pennsylvania. Uh, Bruce Bremer says, don't spend all this in one place. <laughs> thanks, <Yeah>. Bruce. <laughs> thanks, Bruce. And then Charles Young. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, if you haven't been, haven't gotten your tickets yet to the Annapolis Boat Show, there's a link to it in the description below. Don't forget to use the promo code uh, Atticus2021 to get $5 off. You can also check out our boat buying seminar, which will be linked to in the description below, as well as, what was the third thing? Oh, the glasses. If you didn't win a pair of Hobie sunglasses, but you want to take a look at that pair that we have tonight, uh, I've linked that pair in the description below. And we're going to be doing more giveaways yeah. for sunglasses going forward. Yeah. So that'll fact, be cool. In fact, our next giveaway will be for these sunglasses. They're a little Very bit more cool. girly. Okay, cool. Um, but seriously, guys, if you are thinking about going to the Annapolis Boat Show, definitely, definitely go. It's going to be a lot of fun. I, we're going to be there. Zingaro is going to be there, which is cool. Couple Oso's going to be there. Oso's going to be there. <laughs> a couple other channels are going to be there. Um, it's just going to be a blast. And, and if you're at all wondering while we're there, while you're there, like how you could meet up with us, what we're doing, we'll be releasing a schedule um, where, so you can see like exactly kind of like what we'll be up to. So mm -hmm. we'd, love, we'd love to see you there. Mm -hmm. It'd be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And then we'll also be releasing sign-up sheets to our patrons first. Um, so if you want to get dibs on signing up to some of our uh, patron-only events, um, check out our patron link down below. Um, and we also have a t-shirt that we're working on. So we'll have that pretty soon for wow. everyone as well as a special one for our patrons. And so, yeah. real quick, Frank Navas asked this earlier and I was going to answer and I forgot. He's asking it now. He says, please recommendation for a hotel near Annapolis Boat Show. Huh. I think it's really hard to get hotels near the boat show. Mm -hmm. What we did two years ago, the first time that we went, is we got an Airbnb like 30 minutes away. Yeah. What was that town called? I forgot. But Odin, anyway. Odin? Yeah, it might have been yeah. Odinton. Odinton. Yeah, that was it. Um, but yeah, once you get like a ways out of town, the Airbnbs get a lot more reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have access to a car, if you're going to drive there, that's not a bad way to do it. Um, parking can be really difficult, but mm. I mean, you're not going to get away with anything. I mean, the, it's gonna, the thing's going to be a difficult thing no matter what. Be so. a lot of people. Yeah. Be a lot of yeah. fun. Yep. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Good night, Thank guys. Thank you guys so much for one. joining us, and we will see you next week. 
uh, on our episode about sailing with all three sails up, going back to Atticus 1, and Jordan installs some cool things on the boat. Good night. Good night. Say good night, buddy. I love you. Say good night. I'm going to go pee now. Okay. I'm going to eat my own paw, and then I'm going to go pee. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 